uh, so the last talk of the day would be given by uh, would be given uh, by uh, so we will be given by Naoto Shilai yeah. uh, yeah. and uh, so the topic of his talk is quantum thermodynamics of correlated catalytic state conversion at small scale. So uh, please take it away. Okay, uh, thank you for introducing. I'm Naoto Shiraishi uh, from Gakushin University. Today, uh, I'll talk about a uh, <coughs> result on quantum thermodynamics uh, of correlated catalytic state conversion. Uh, <coughs> this uh, result is a joint work with Takahiro Sagawa, and the result is published in this paper. So if you're interested in, uh, please see uh, this paper. Uh, <coughs> we first summarize my talk uh, in one slide. We consider a state convertibility in uh, some dynamic processes. In macroscopic cases, uh, the unique inequality, the second row, characterizes uh, <coughs> the necessary and sufficient condition of state convertibility. But uh, in contrast, uh, in microscopic systems, uh, usually, uh, infinitely many inequalities naturally ap uh, appear. But uh, our in our main result, even in small quantum systems, uh, the state compatibility uh, with a correlated catalyst is characterized only by the second row with free energy. This is the main message of my talk. Okay. Now uh, we. Uh, uh, this is the outer of my talk. First, I'll explain the motivation and background of my research. In, uh, mar in macroscopic conventional thermodynamics, we consider the uh, state compatibility of equilibrium state. And we consider whether a given equilibrium state X is, uh, is convertible uh, to another state Y by an uh, allowed operation. In case of isomer operation, the order of free energy characterizes the necessary and sufficient condition of uh, state compatibility. In contrast, in macroscopic cases, various new constraints naturally uh, emerge. For example, an infinite family of inequalities uh, <coughs> shown to be the necessary and sufficient condition of state compatibility. So, uh, what is the necessary and sufficient condition for state conversion? It's a very uh, interesting question in quantum thermodynamics. And in addition, because uh, we believe the universality of the second row, whether uh, the second row uh, become a unique criterion is also an interesting question. In this talk, <coughs> we address these questions. Uh, we first uh, <coughs> clarify the class of allowed operation. In this talk, uh, we focus on Gibbs preserving maps. A Gibbs preserving map, or in short, GPM, is a CPTP map which uh, maps a Gibbs state to the same Gibbs state. Since a GPM is uh, regarded as a standard class of thermodynamic operation, we adopt uh, this convention and <coughs> we employ GPM as a thermodynamic process. Uh, <coughs> we can extend the state compatibility of GPM by introducing a catalytic system. The catalyst uh, does not change its own state in the through the operation, but uh, this system helps uh, the state conversion in the system. Here, uh, the GPM is applied onto the composite system of the system and the catalyst. One may feel that the <coughs> catalyst uh, gives almost no, uh, plays almost no role, but in fact, the catalyst indeed helps the state conversion of the system. We can further extend the state compatibility by allowing a small, negligibly small correlation between the system and the catalyst. In this case, the reduced state of the catalyst should be equal to the initial state of the catalyst, and the 
final state, a reduced final state of the system should be close to desired state. Why? Before here, uh, we have introduced three classes of operations. And the necessary and sufficient condition of state conversion for these uh, three classes have already been clarified for classical systems. In particular, in the case with GPM with correlated catalysts, the second row characterizes the necessary and sufficient condition. However, unfortunately, uh, unlike classical cases, no simple criterion uh, have been shown for quantum cases. In this talk, we address this section. So, quantum systems uh, and we employ GPM with correlated catalyst. In fact, <coughs> it is conjectured that in the quantum cases, the necessary and sufficient condition of the state conversion from row to row prime by GPM with correlated catalyst is uh, also uh, given by the second row with quantum kalbach leibler divergence. Here, uh, the free energy of rho is defined by using the quantum uh, KL divergence to rho gives. And the state conversion, uh, it is conjectured that the state conversion by GPM with quarter catalyst is possible if and only if the, the initial free energy is larger than the final free energy. If this conjecture is true, then a single thermodynamic potential is recovered. One may uh, consider that what we have to do is only construct the quantum counterpart of the classical proof. However, uh, this does not work because in the uh, proof for classical cases, we employ, uh, for example, we, when we, we prove this, we employ the result of this. However, uh, <coughs> as we explained, we do not have a simple criterion for quantum cases we cannot uh, follow uh, this approach, and we need a completely new approach. Now we move to our main result. Our main result is in fact the same as the previous conjecture. So uh, we solve uh, the conjecture in positive. And the second row is indeed recovered in quantum microscopic systems. This is our main result. The necessary part of uh, this uh, claim is very easy. In fact, we can show the necessary part by using the additivity, superadditivity, and monotonicity of quantum care divergence. We can write this uh, for just a four-line proof for the necessary part. So uh, <coughs> we uh, the difficult part is the proof for the sufficient part. So if the initial free energy is larger than the final free energy, we should construct a proper uh, GPM and a catalyst which convert uh, the initial state to the final state. In this talk, uh, uh, in this proof, we explicitly construct uh, the desired uh, GPM and the catalyst by three steps. In the first step, we uh, derive a sufficient condition. Uh, this is not a necessary condition, but a sufficient condition for state conversions. This uh, approach is also known as the measurement and preparation method. In the second step, we derive a necessary sufficient condition for asymptotic state conversions. So in this case, we uh, consider uh, multiple copies of states, and we uh, consider the conversion of the multiple copies of initial states to the multiple copies of final states. In the third part, we reduce the result for asymptotic state conversion to correlated catalytic state conversion. And combining these three steps, uh, we <coughs> obtain the desired GPM and catalyst. To state our first result, uh, first theorem, we uh, <coughs> introduce Rennie divergence. In particular, we use Rennie zero divergence and Rennie infinity divergence. These two divergences are defined as this. Intuitively, the Rennie divergence is a quantification of 
state the distinguishability between rho and sigma. And linear zero divergence uh, can be regarded as the lowest minimum distinguishability. And linear infinity divergence can be regarded as the highest maximum distinguishability. At a well-known Kerr divergence settled between the Rainy infinity and Rainy zero. And it is known that uh, if the Rainy zero divergence for low initial state is larger than the Rainy infinity divergence for low prime final state, then there exists a uh, proper GPM, which maps low to low prime. As we explained, uh, <coughs> so Rainy zero divergence is the minimum di uh, distinguishability. And Rainy infinity divergence uh, can be regarded as the maximum distinguishability. So this theorem uh, can be intuitively understood as this. The <coughs> distinguishability of low and low gifts in the worst sense it's still larger than the distinguishability of row prime and row gives in the best sense. So, but the uh, the worst uh, distinguishability is still larger than the best distinguishability. So, row is more distinguishable than row prime from Gibbs state in any sense. Then, row is convertible to row prime via GPM. We can prove uh, this theorem one in uh, just single stride. In the uh, <coughs> this uh, we explicitly construct a GPM in two steps. In the first step, we perform a measurement with a p rho and one minus p rho. Here, p rho is a projection operator onto the support of rho. Then the rho is mapped onto the <coughs> classical. Uh, probability distribution, two valued classical probability distribution, one zero, and rho gives is mapped onto k and one minus k. With uh, here k is defined as this. In the second step, we prepare a quantum state from the two valued classical probability distribution with this rule. Here ether is the quantum state given as this. This uh, st is indeed a quantum state, so positive semi-definite, which is confirmed by this condition. And through this, uh, <coughs> through uh, these two steps, rho is mapped onto rho prime and rho gives is mapped onto the same rho gives. So this is indeed a, G a desired GPM. To uh, go to the second uh, step, we uh, introduce Ipsion smoothing of Rainy divergence. Intuitively speaking, the Ipsion smoothing is a kind of approximation of the state uh, of the final uh, first argument of Rainy divergence. And using uh, this Ipsion smoothing, we uh, find a very uh, interesting result. Here, we consider a Rainy zero divergence and Rainy infinity divergence of multiple copies of rho and sigma. And we uh, divide it by the number of copies. So <coughs> the left hand side is a uh, uh, rainy divergence rate per a uh, single state. Then by uh, <coughs> taking the infinite copy limit, then in both cases for rainy zero divergence and rainy infinite divergence, the n copies of rho and n copies of distinguishability between n copies of rho and n copies of sigma converges to the same value, the k divergence between rho and sigma. This is a claim of theorem 2. This result is shown by using the quantum standard lemma. By combining these two results, we find a very interesting result. First, from theorem 2, if the free energy of rho, which is same as the k divergence of rho to rho gives, is larger than the final free energy, then there exists a sufficiently large n such that uh, the Rainy zero divergence or for the n copies of rho is larger than 
the linear infinity divergence of n copies of row prime here. Then, using theorem 1, we find that there exists a proper GPM which map n copies of row to a state close to n copies of row prime. Here, this GPM uh, contains some error because uh, <coughs> we uh, use the uh, epsilon smoothed version of Rainy divergences. So, uh, <coughs> from uh, step one and step two, we have obtained uh, uh, <coughs> as asymptotic state conversion, result for asymptotic state conversion. So, in the third step, we reduce the result uh, of asymptotic conversion to catalytic conversion. We uh, construct catalyst as this. If we here take the example of case of n equals 6. The vertical axis represents a different system. So we take a five copies of system and one Lagrange system. The horizontal direction represents a different state. So we uh, prepare six different states and we mix them with equal weight 1 over 6. Here, uh, this state is a reduced state of the final state of the GPM uh, in the previous slide, this one. Then, the uh, product state of the system and the catalyst in the initial uh, state is written as this. Now, we apply uh, the obtained GPM to this uh, state and we obtain this state. Now, we regard this system as a catalyst and this system as a system. Then the catalyst uh, returns its original state and the state of the system is close to the desired state, rho prime, which completes our proof. Okay. Now uh, we uh, put some remarks and then close my talk. We first uh, <coughs> remark on the case of work stage. In the previous main result, uh, if the initial free energy is less than the final free energy, we cannot convert the initial state to the final state. But even when the initial free energy is less than the final free energy, by introducing a work stage and uh, <coughs> compensate uh, this the free energy by consuming the energy in the work stage, then we can map the state, initial state to the final state, even when the free energy is free energy increases. Here, work stage is a two-level system. And <coughs> these two are the energy eigenstate of uh, this work stage. Of course, if we allow to correlate the work stage with the cut catalyst and system, then uh, by applying uh, the previous results to the composite system of system and the work storage, we can easily obtain that if we compensate the free energy difference by work storage, there exists a proper GPM which maps row to row prime. But we require a stronger condition that uh, the work storage uh, cannot be correlated with catalyst and system. Fortunately, even under this uh, severe condition, there, uh, if the free energy, initial free energy is less than the final one, by setting the energy difference of the work storage to the free energy difference, then there is this proper GPM and a catalyst, which indeed maps the initial state to the final state. Here, uh, we remark that uh, our uh, proof works only for the case of work cost. So we, when we consuming the energy in the work storage, and the case of work extraction has not yet been shown, at least at present. The second remark is on some applications of our, our proof technique. Our proof technique applies not only to the quantum thermodynamics, but also to uh, various other quantum resource theories. The, in particular, by following the third step, if we have a sufficient condition for asymptotic state conversion, then 
uh, we can directly obtain the sufficient condition for correlated catalytic state conversion by using this type of catalyst. And in fact, this uh, idea have already been applied to various other quantum resource theories, uh, such as ent entropy conjecture and entanglement. So uh, we uh, believe that uh, there exists many other uh, applications to many, many other quantum resource theories. Our third and final remark is on the summer operation. Here, uh, we first add the <coughs> To clarify our remark, we, for, we should first define the summer operation, or in short, TO. Here, uh, the initial state rho is convertible to rho prime via TO if there exists an energy conserving unitary and an auxiliary system A which takes a Gibbs state. And by applying the energy conserving unitary on this composite system, then the initial state rho is converted to rho prime. Here, the final state of the auxiliary system is arbitrary. If the state of the auxiliary system A is not necessarily the Gibbs state, but a general incoherent state with respect to energy, then this type of map is called a symmetric map. In classical cases, GPM is equal to TO, but in quantum cases, it is known that uh, GPM is a strict inclusion of uh, TO. Uh, I'm sorry, TO is strict inclusion of GPM. In particular, a uh, symmetric map uh, which includes TO cannot create energy coherent, so we can't uh, create energy coherence as this. And because uh, the difference between the GPM and TO lies in the symmetric property, we focus on the symmetric map uh, in the, this remark. To uh, clarify the power of symmetric map, we introduce uh, the symmetric map with qualitative catalyst, which is equivalent to this type of map. So we prepare the system catalyst and auxiliary system uh, with incoherent state. And at the final state, uh, these three systems can correlate with each other. One may uh, expect uh, that the power of symmetric map is highly enhanced by uh, the correlated catalyst. But if the initial state of the system is incoherent, then uh, the final state should be incoherent, even with correlated catalyst if we use a symmetric map. This result is known as the no broadcasting theorem, which is shown by these papers. So uh, TO is not characterized at least solely by the second row, because uh, the second row does not concern the amount of coherence in the system. But <coughs> we, uh, we can further extend the state compatibility in symmetric map. We consider the case of marginal catalyst. In this case, we prepare a multiple catalyst and we allow to correlate a catalyst with each other. And the marginal catalytic operation is called this type of map. We consider the power of symmetric maps with marginal catalysts. Then, surprisingly, we find that any initial state, including an uh, incoherent state, can be converted to any final state, including maximally coherent state, by a symmetric map with marginal catalyst. So, in case with marginal catalyst, coherence gives no restriction, and the resource server asymmetry with marginal catalyst becomes trivial. And based on this theorem and several observations, we conjecture that if the initial state has non-zero coherence, then this initial state can be converted to any final state, including maximally coherent state, via a symmetric map with correlated catalysts. 
And this theorem and this conjecture uh, is also treated uh, by the lightning talk by Ryuji Takagi. So if you're interested in this result in detail, please uh, see his talk. So, uh, this is the summary of my talk. Our main result is that if we consider the quantum systems and we consider the state conversion via GPM with coated catalyst, then the state compatibility is characterized by uniquely by the second law with uh, free energy with uh, KL divergence. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Professor Shidashi. Uh, this is very uh, elegant proof. I like the, 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 the permutation trick in the proof very much. And is there any question? Hmm. Let me see if there's any question in the Slack and you may also jump in, just unmute yourself. Uh, may I ask one question actually? Yeah. So I'll take the privilege of being uh, the chair. So um, I was wondering, uh, you consider the exact conversion sort of, but is it to also possible to to have an approximate version of the conversion? I'm sorry, let's say a result like yeah. My result is oh. on approximate state conversion. I'm I haven't uh, uh, mentioned oh, this pretty so. but uh, we state that uh, in case of correlated catalyst and the case of mm -hmm. catalyst, we allow a small uh, error in the final state. Uh -huh. I see, so I see. our result is in fact on the, uh, on some... Uh, but this on arrow is kind of vanishing, right? Yes, I see. I see. So this arrow could be made arbitrarily small by increasing the size Ar of the catalyst. Small. I see. This but but small. then you have to increase your, your catalyst, right? So you have to yeah. increase the size of C to make it up tree. So there is a trade-off relation between the dimensions, right? Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, this, uh, this, there must exist a trade-off between the amount of error and the size of catalyst, which is determined by the uh, quantum, uh, the speed of convergence in quantum stains lemma. Okay, I see. Great, thanks. This speed is Any more different. question? Any more question? Uh, I guess everyone's just tired or uh, maybe a bit sleepy or so. Uh, since we already passed the time limits, uh, let's call it a day. And uh, unless I miss any question in the chat, no. So I'll just have to uh, remind all the speaker to send their slides to the Beyond ID uh, email address. So. Uh, I'll also maybe uh, copy and paste the address into the chat. And uh, uh, I'll just here thank all the speakers of this session and uh, uh, we'll meet tomorrow uh, in the, at noon. So thank you all for joining this session and uh, see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.